Who do we got with us this morning? I just said my name is Christina Brooks. Tell us a little bit about yourself, Miss Christina. What would you like to know, sir? Uh, where you grew up at? What kind of household you came from? Mm, I, I come from a middle, a middle age, uh, a middle class black family that just started that generated like in the early eighties. It's like not really heard of. I'm first born on both sides, my mom and my dad's side. So I'm like very, very, extremely, extremely extra, extra spoiled, no, it's like the word lightning that's on here. <laughs> anyway, can you understand me? Yes. I want to sound clear. I don't want to sound like I'm mumbling. Yes. You could you could talk a little clearer, but we we can understand you. Anyway, I had everything I had everything a newborn was supposed to have first coming into the world. Um I had my mom had the clock diaper service and I had all the, all the baby clothes, all the infant clothes, all the toddler clothes, all the first grade clothes. You know, I, you know, I, I, all the kindergarten and all the first grade and all the daycare was already paid, was purchased and put up for me to work. All of it was my first year, my first kindergarten year in school. My grandmother was serious about a grandbaby and I was her first. And, did she, you, and she spoiled me right there. Did you grow up with a mother and a father in the household? I did not. My dad, my dad was only around me until I was four, and then I found out like ten years, ten years from ten years earlier than now that I have a half sister, and that my dad married another woman and had a whole family, had a whole other family with another woman. So my half sister had my daddy around her her entire life, almost her entire like what was it? She was grown because he just died, but I only had I only remember my daddy. I remember daddy telling me what a, what, a, what a woman's supposed to be like and what a man wants in a woman at four years old. And so I can just imagine the amount, of, the amount of stuff he instilled in my little sister. With him talking to me like that when I was at, when I was only four, I can just imagine how much stuff my sister knows that I don't know when it comes to men. Do you remember some of the stuff that he told you? I just told you that he was telling me that a man don't want no trophy. He don't want no white. He don't want nobody that he can just show. Uh, he, he wants a woman that he can show out, but he also wants a woman that he can show out as far as her brain, her smarts, her, you know, you don't want to open your mouth and sound stupid. And you're a grown adult, that don't, that's not, that ain't pleasing, that's not what a man wants, that's not what a real man wants anyway. What schools did you go to growing up? Um, I went, my, my elementary schools were Tillman, 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 Tillman Elementary's in Kirkwood, and then um, Robinson is in Webster Groves. Kirkwood is like, Kirkwood, Kirkwood is like West Side, Wilson, Pine Lawn, you see what I'm saying? Because it's Kirkwood, Webster Grove, um, Richmond Heights, Maplewood, all, all right by each other. That's why I was like, Kirkwood is like the city, but the county. <laughs> anyway, what else do you want to know about? What do you remember about growing up in Kirkwood? Man, being a tomboy, being as rough as I can be, playing as well as I can play, because I got three brothers, and all I know is to be rough. <laughs> all I know is to be rough. You know, I hit harder than the average female because of my brothers. But I'm so girly now, to the point where I don't want stuff getting on my hands. I'm like, ugh, what is on my hands? I won't touch dirty dish water. Dirty dish water that's been sitting for a couple of days, I'm not gonna put my hand in there unless I have gloves on. It's just certain stuff that, I, that I'm just so brilliant about. Like, it's sweating, perspiring, I'm about to have a fit. Summertime is when I keep, it the, most, I keep the most attitude, I, I, I be the most moody, it's because I don't like to sweat. I just think that's manly. A woman's not supposed to sweat like that. And all these showers and all these baths and all these wash ups, all these water works because it's so dang on hot. Like right now I'm sweating. I, I ain't even had a beer yet. I'm sweating. Did you graduate from high school? I did. I graduated from Versailles as an honor student at 3.2 in 95. Where did life take you after graduation? Away from the goddamn, away from school. <laughs> I didn't want to shit to do with school, I said. So what did To this you... day I can still go to college right now with no problem. I just don't like, I, I never did like school. School wasn't for me. So what did you do after? I think uh, I only, I think the only reason why I graduated is because I was under the influence of marijuana in every class. The, I think, the, I think, I, I really I strongly believe weed makes you focus and that they should stop saying that weed is a gateway drug because I disagree. I think that, I think alcohol is a gateway drug because alcohol loosens people up and makes their mind more willing to try more things. Weed makes you focus. 
we put you on point. So that's why I disagree with that being uh, the gateway. The gateway is definitely should be definitely the alcohol. So what what did you do after graduation? I just went on about growing adult life. I had taken a lot of responsibility. My mom was smoking crack. I was selling it. So it what was, you do shit to that lifestyle? I had to grow up. I. I couldn't get the love I wanted from my mama, so I, I figured out other ways to make it happen. I, 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 ended, up, I ended up becoming a, a, a 107 Hooper Crip when I was 16 years old. I came in the hardest way in some of the gang, and that's a circle rule. That la it lasts for six minutes. You gotta keep, you gotta stand your feet, and you gotta take all those blows, and you gotta fight back, and you cannot fall for six minutes. You know, six minutes seem like 30, they feel like an hour, 45 minutes. Those six minutes of, of all that pounding, yeah. It feels like way longer than that. <laughs> After your initiation into the gang, then what was it? A life of a whole lot of a whole lot of unnecessary bull, basically. A lot of unne a lot of things that I, I mean, you know, once you kill somebody, the only thing you cop of killing somebody is you have the ability to kill another human being, but the the, the dreams, the nightmares and that stuff don't leave, it stay with you. Have and I'm just like, I gotta keep on praying to God and talking to him and, and explaining why I did what I done and, and the reason why I chose to do what I done. And you best believe they better add it to what, he, to what he's thinking. To what his thinking is the reason why you done what you did because if they don't line up, you might be the way it's went. Goodbye. <laughs> Have you lost a lot of friends to these streets over the years? Or is that a And steady lose them, steady lose them. The first year they brought, the first year that they, they fit now, and they fit now, and the, and the stuff they want to call ice, crystal methamphetamines. The first six months for a year, a lot of my friends day one stopped dead from fit now. I think they were they were purposely uh, like hotlining females that owe money and kept on money and kept on money. You know, like we gonna give it, we gonna we gonna make us this getting born. We gonna give us fit now. And that, it's gonna be a wrap, and that's that, that's what it was. How has the streets changed as far as the drug culture? These since the streets fentanyl? are tremendously more dangerous now. This is like really not fun no more. The bad is finally starting our way to good, and in, in my part of uh, stopping, I'm to the point where I want complete change, and I know that if everything don't change, nothing will change. You know, I'm taking on full responsibility. I I did I I done all this, so I gotta undo all this. And that is why, that's why the NA meeting stages for today. Because it's gonna, it takes years to mess your life up, so it's gonna take years to undo all that. You know? I hope I'm giving you a good interview. How did you avoid the, um, the fin, uh, like how do you avoid, how let do you me, stay let safe me, Let me here? tell you something, I'm, I'm <laughs> him upstairs made me a really, really, uh, made, created me with a very strong mind because I've tried almost every drug that you can do that's uh this this sold by street pharmacies under uh, every drug that you can do. I just thank God because he didn't because of me having a, an addictive personality that I didn't like all the drugs I tried playing with them, thinking I I'm tough ass, you know what I mean? That I didn't like them all because I'd be out of bed. I'd be gone with no with no way back. They would have my soul because of that. Yeah. That's serious. What advice would you give to a young lady thinking about moving around on these You know streets. what, I, I gotta tell you about what, what happened last week. This little girl ran out into, ran, ran out in Mother's King and sat in the middle of the street like she was trying to kill herself. And I had to go put my big girl drawers on and go out there and tell the child to get up, get up out the middle of the street. And then I had to make oncoming traffic stop. God is amazing because it so happened that car that I had to try to stop and somebody in there knew who I was and told the dude, stop the car, stop the car. Don't hit her, it's my friend. I pulled this child up, I, I pulled this child up and got her out the street. I, she said, I don't want to be dead. I just want to be dead. I want to be with my mama. I said, where your mama is? She was like, my mama's dead. I said, no, that's the trickery of the devil. The devil makes you think that if you kill yourself, that you're going to be right where you need to be with your mama. But if you kill yourself, baby girl, you're going to go to hell. Because that's a sin that, that you cannot repent for. You cannot ask for forgiveness for killing yourself if you're if you already dead. I said, and trust me, your mama do not want you to die right now. You got your whole life ahead of you. I said, how old are you? She's like 14. I was like, 14? I can't even remember 14. 
Man, and yet you see, I said, but if I was if I was 14 years old in 2024, I probably would be terrified like you are. You're scared because you ain't got your mama. You should be scared. So it's, it's different now. In 2024, I tell my nieces and nephews all the time. My, my niece, I have a niece that's, in, that's in, in Florida, in the state of Florida with her dad now. She's 16 years old and this 24. I got a niece that's about to be 16 on the, on the 19th of May one. I couldn't imagine being their age now. This is not the same. The streets are not what they, the streets are not, I mean, it is so hard now. But you know what, there's a lot. I like that there's a lot of more help now for like the women that do what I do and the people that are, you know, that are, that are drug addicted and the people that are homeless, it's a lot more, it's a lot more um, resources and a lot more like people like reaching out and you know, going out of their way to make sure that people on the street are people people in the street are okay that they have something to eat that they have water to drink when it's hot. That, that's, I wish they had all that <laughs> before 24 years of my life passed smoking crack. So you've been out here for 24 years. I started getting out in 2005, and I was all the way I was all the way on the West Coast. Who introduced you to that on the West Coast? A fucking trick, a Mexican trick. Sorry, I keep cussing because I know I can't cuss. It's gonna get beat up. What I'm just saying. <laughs> So yeah. you were you were kind of street street hustling. And, Not, and yeah, yeah, because when I got out there in California, I only had twenty five hundred dollars, and I paid my brother what two hundred dollars a month. So by the time twelve months was up, that money was gone just about, and I still had some of job because the, my brother told me that the job was gonna go on your education. If your education ain't high, education level ain't high enough to their standards, it's gonna make it hard for you to work. And he said, don't think about fast food because all the Mexicans and the foreign people work those. Fast food because they pay because they pay them under the table, and they're not gonna hire nobody that's not that, that don't have their ethnic background because they worry about getting snitched on. How long was you out on the West Coast? Ah, I went out there in two thousand. I went out there in two thousand. I came back in five five years later. I just got this why I stayed in California for so long. <laughs> I know. One of the reasons, one of my brothers that's right next to me is my best friend. He lived up there in 2014. And she got away in 2005 to get up there behind him. At age 26. I was 26 years old. I was curious about crack cocaine because I sold it and my mom used it. And my mom showed me the, 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 the definition of what a crackhead is or a dope man. By all any means necessary, she went all the way out her way to get high. So what was your fascination with it? My, the, the hold it has on me is the orgasm, the orgasms, the sexual orgasm and the weight loss. Those are the holes that it has on me. But it's, it, the crack cocaine is a strong hole. Just coming from the devil. <laughs> by the devil. And, huh? You got to clear off the Okay, I'm doing an interview. Yes, we almost done, I'm sorry. doing an interview. Yes, we come off over with. We almost done, sorry. Oh, you can watch. I, I, I'm not bad. I'm not bashful. I am not bashful. <laughs> you probably, you probably, you probably the, the pastor. That's right. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too, sir. I appreciate that. So, what have you seen? Why are the the girls so young out here now? Like, I've because seen, it's different now. What's it's but what's it, what has changed? Now. Since? I mean, these kids, uh, the kids are growing up faster. I'm 47 with three grandsons. A 32-year-old grown daughter, you see what I'm saying? A 47-year-old grandmother's not supposed to be still in the streets doing nothing. It's different now. And again, I'm not grandma age. Grandma to me is like 50 and up. I'm only 47, even though I was a few shy years of 50, that's still too young to be a grandma. Have you tried to get clean? Oh, yeah, I, I've, I've been clean several times. Do you see yourself ever getting clean and staying, staying clean? Yes. I do. I know, I know the mighty power of God, so I, and this, that's where I'm going with it. I, I'm not gonna try. I'm not gonna do treatment no more. I'm just gonna trust God and stand strong like the strong person that He made me. And I bet you this time I stay clean because anything can be done through Him. Any, anything that you're not humanly possible of doing, you ask Him to help you with it. If you ask Him to help help you with it, and you His child, and you know where you and you know where you where your soul is required, and you know what you know. I 
Yeah, I'm ugly. I make the ugly face when I cry. And you just know, I was in a, I was at a position like five years ago. I feel like I was in the middle of the devil and dying. They were both like a on me. But now I know, my eyes open. This is scary. I don't see the world like people see it. I see the world like he see it. And it's scary. I don't even want to see all that stuff. And I be asking him, why, why you let me know all this? And then why you make me love everybody in my culture? All these black people, I love everybody. And they have to love themselves. But you don't make me love everybody. And I can't control it. It's crazy. Talking about something, don't ask you. You answer the question, Lord. Well, well if, if I pray to you, if you, if I pray and talk to you like you're my daddy on earth, if my daddy on earth do something to me and I don't understand, you think I'm not going to ask him why he did that? Do you have any ways you can be reached? Do you have social media? Do you have cash app? Do, if people want to reach out and get resources <laughs> I just with got you? my phone. I just got another phone. If people want to call you on your phone, you can give out your mm. phone number if you want to. But I, I get what you're saying. Um, no, I, I'm struggling with myself right now. I ain't ready. I ain't ready to get, 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 I mean, I'm going to save every soul I can. I'm going to get that money. 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 i i I pray and ask God to put a place ahead to protect around this child's head and the people that are close to her to, to convert her thinking, to watch over her, to keep her safe because she's being a fool, she know not what she do. And I ask them to protect her from my belief because I know that I know that you can do that. You can protect somebody else and save somebody else through you. If there's anything you want to say in closing that you haven't said to get off your chest, people looking for you, worried about you, if you're okay or whatever, now's the time you can say it in closing. It's Christiana. <laughs> Christina. Christina. Uh-oh. I don't really got nothing to say. We appreciate it. Just, just mm -hmm. keep, keep praying for me, family, because I know y'all are. And it's working. We, it really is. We appreciate you taking time out with us this morning. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Yes, ma'am. Yeah.